Good morning, Summer Kids. How are you guys doing? I'm loving this rain. I love wearing jackets and I love getting hot cocoa and it's just my favorite. So I'm loving it. I hope you're loving it too. We're gonna play a game. Are you guys ready? It's called Believe It or Not. I'm gonna say a statement. It's either true or it's false and you have to choose to believe it or not. The first one is that bats are the only mammal that can fly. That's true. The second one, pugs are the smallest breed of dogs in the world. Eh, false, not true. It's actually the chihuahua. How about that grizzly bears can run as fast as a horse? That is true. Did you know that? They can run so fast. Okay, let's talk about speed. This one, that your sneeze can go as fast as 200 miles per hour. That is false. It is 100 miles per hour. The last one is that the North Pole is warmer than the South Pole. Hmm, that one is true. The more outrageous something is, the harder it is to believe. And in today's Bible story, Jesus' disciples were told something completely outrageous. They were told that Jesus is alive. But wait, they saw him die. He can't be alive. Wrong, he was alive. And let's see how he proved it. First, let's pray. God, thank you so much for this time that we have together to talk about how Jesus died and he rose again, all so that our sins could be wiped clean and we can have a relationship with you. And please help us to take it in today in Jesus' name, amen. It's that time again. It's announcements, 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 announcements. We have two announcements. We have our weekly activities that Mrs. Heather and I put out for you guys. We do some really, really fun things that you can do at home with your family. The second thing is that we have our Student Spotlight Challenge. Now, for the Student Spotlight Challenge this month, we want you guys to send in your favorite Bible verse. Just say your favorite Bible verse, record it, upload it to the Summit Kids Facebook page, and then you'll see it in next month's video. Howdy friends, how are you guys? Well, it is the first harvest of the season and I'm excited because we get to fill this here basket up with all of the good stuff that has been growing and we get to collect it and it is proof that we've got something good. Now I wanna tell you something. Some of my other farmer friends thought I was just silly for letting you guys come and work with me. But you know what? I said, Psh, I, I'm going to let you work with me because just because you're unexperienced, it doesn't mean that you can't come and do a good job. So we're going to go collect all the good stuff so we can see what kind of crop you've got. Now, they were disbelieving. And in the Bible story today, Jesus' disciples were just as disbelieving because it was something hard for them to understand. Because they saw Jesus die on the cross. They saw, but they didn't see him raise again. So when, when they went to go look, they were hearing reports and people were saying that Jesus was alive and it was hard for them to understand. So let's go see how Jesus proved his resurrection. On the first day of the week, in the evening, the disciples gathered together in a house. They locked the doors because they were afraid of the Jews. They didn't want to be killed like Jesus had been killed. Some of Jesus' disciples had reported seeing him alive. Was it true? As the disciples talked, Jesus appeared among them and said, Peace to you. The disciples were afraid. They thought they were seeing a ghost. It's me, Jesus said. Look at me and touch me. A ghost does not have flesh and bones, but I do. Jesus showed his disciples his hands and his side. They saw his wounds. The disciples rejoiced because they were so happy to see Jesus. The disciples gave Jesus some fish to eat. Jesus talked to them and explained the Bible to them. The Bible is about me, Jesus said. He helped them understand how the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms told about him. Then Jesus told the disciples, that they had a job to do. Jesus had died and was raised from the dead so that people could be forgiven for their sins. The disciples needed to tell other people to repent from their sins and be forgiven. Jesus said, God sent me to earth 
And in the same way, I am sending you. One of Jesus' disciples, Thomas, was not with the others when Jesus visited him. He did not believe that Jesus was alive. Thomas said, I want to see and touch the holes in his hands and his side, or I will never believe. A week later, Thomas was with the disciples when Jesus appeared again. Jesus said to Thomas, put your finger here and look at my hands. Reach out and touch my side. Don't be an unbeliever, believe. Thomas did believe. My Lord and my God, he said. Jesus said, because you have seen me, you have believed. Those who believe in me without seeing me are blessed. For 40 days, Jesus presented himself to more than 500 people and proved that he is alive. Jesus is still alive today. We have not seen Jesus, but if we believe in him, we will be blessed. He sends out believers to tell others about him and gives us power through the Holy Spirit. Hi there, I'm Pastor Brian, and it's time for questions from kids. Skylar from Marion, Indiana asks, Sometimes I doubt God is real. Is that wrong? What should I do? Skylar, that is completely understandable. Uh, I think all of us have times where we, we question things about our faith, and, and some are, are big ideas like God's existence at all. Some are, are a little bit smaller things. But that is one thing that we all share in common, that faith at times is difficult. I've been there. I know as a father of three kids who are, are really learning about who God is and, and learning about the gospel, we have conversations in our home quite a bit about this. And so it's common, and here's the thing, it's okay. Um, God understands that we have questions. He understands that there are times we're gonna doubt, and he is so kind, he's so loving and gracious to come and meet us where we are and take us where we need to be, deeper, stronger faith. And so it's okay. And here's the thing, doubting is normal. What you're not doing is rejecting. Those are two different things. Questioning, wanting to know God better, being confused about who he is and what he's done, that's normal. It's so different from rejecting God and saying, no, I know you're not real, or I reject who you are, I reject what you've done. And that's not what you're doing. So find comfort in that. You're not a bad Christian because you have questions. God invites us to bring questions to him. That's what we love about God, that he is not threatened by our questions. Uh, he is, he's not unnerved by our questions and our doubts. He is gracious to meet us where we are, again, and take us where we need to be. So here's a question for you to think about. What do you think is the difference between doubt and disbelief? Why might we doubt God? This is a really good question. You know, it's actually okay to doubt God. Did you know that? I mean, it sounds kind of funny, but actually a lot of Christians doubt God. They have a lot of questions for him. I mean, how did he do the wonderful things that he did? Is he still real? Some people doubt God because they can't see him. Other people doubt God because they've had something terrible happen in their life. And they're saying, how can there be a God with something so terrible happening? But you know what? When you have those kinds of questions, it's okay. It's okay to have them. It doesn't mean you're not a Christian. It just means that you have questions. So take them to somebody like your parents or your leaders at church. You could take them to me and we can talk about it together and we can try to come up with the answer and try to find it together. Sometimes I'll know it right then. Other times I'll have to go and study and then come back and talk to you about it. And that's okay. There's a difference between doubting God and just disbelieving like he doesn't exist at all. So I wanna encourage you guys, when you have a question, you can talk to you know, your parents, your leaders. Also, you can talk to God about it. God wants to, he knows you have questions and that's okay. So just bring it to him and say, God, why does this happen? Why did this happen? Are you real? And God will walk with you through that journey too. So I wanna encourage you, talk to your family, talk to your church leaders and talk to God about it. We've been learning about the people groups in East Asia. We're going to learn about a different people group in East Asia today. 
missionaries have different ways and different means to reach the different people groups. But they all have the same message, and that is that Jesus died, he rose again, and he is alive today. So let's take a minute and let's pray for the missionaries around the world. Lord, thank you so much for the missionaries. Thank you for the missionaries in East Asia, Lord, that are helping these people, that are helping the different tribes and the different nomadic groups, Lord, um, that you help them to reach you. And I pray that you give them the words to speak. I pray that you give them the directions to go to find these people. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, that's all the time we have for today. Our video time is done, but there are still small groups for you to do at home. On the page, you can pull up Trekkers for first through third grade, Trailblazers for fourth and fifth grade, open up the materials, and you guys can do the small group stuff at home together. Isn't that awesome? So awesome. Okay, well, I'll see you guys again next week. Have a great week. Bye.